Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another 1-6 scale figure unboxing and review. Today we're taking a look at a first figure from a brand new company known as Org Toys. It's not very often that we get to do that. Org Toys, they're the new kid on the block and I'm really excited to get stuck in. This is Paul of House Atreides based off his appearance in Dune. AKA Dune, if you're from America. I'm an Aussie, so I'm going to try my best to say Dune. If I slip up and say Dune, I apologize. I do have to say a massive thank you to Org Toys for sending me this review sample. As always, whenever I do get a review sample, all thoughts are 100% my own. If you are heading down to the description, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon, and join button, so you're notified as soon as a brand new review goes live on the channel. As for the box art, I'm already pretty impressed. This cardboard is super heavy duty. Up top, Dune, an image of Paul Atreides facing away from us with this maze pattern in front of him. Down below, House Atreides with this raised glossy print, an Org Toys logo, and a Legendary Pictures logo. Yes, this figure is officially licensed. Plus the color scheme with the green smoky effects and the gold. It pops. On the side of the box, we have more of that green smokiness, the House Atreides symbol, and it also says House Atreides. Around the back, all the boring stuff, warnings and legal info. His name once more, another dude logo in case you forgot which movie this guy is from. My favorite little warning is this one. Please keep the package for future reference. They really do not want you throwing out this box, and I don't think you should either, not when it feels as premium as this one does. Oh, hello, Timothy Chalamet. That very clearly is Paul Atreides, and his name is down below, just one more time. There's also a topographical map of some kind. I guess Org Toys were pretty confident in their ability to deliver on what was promised with the prototype, because they've already announced multiple other figures in the Dune line. They've announced Josh Brolin and Jason Momoa. I'm really excited to get those as well, but first, in-hand impressions for Paul Atreides. So far, so good. Check out the proportions and that head sculpt. What we are going to do now, though, is get all of his accessories laid out in the light box and take a closer look at everything he comes with. Starting off with the display base first. Is this maybe a little bit too big? Potentially. For me, this is a gorgeous centerpiece. In the middle of your Dune display, after all, Paul is kind of the main character, this totally works. Up top, we have the House Atreides symbol, and it is this rough textured print with multiple different colors, so it is going to stand out. Around the front, Dune, Paul Atreides on an etched metal nameplate. Then up top, an adjustable crotch grabber. This suspiciously Oreo-looking object is not an Oreo, it's a hover lamp. There's some intricate sculpt work in the middle, some translucent sections. Yes, this does light up, don't worry, we'll get there. Then the paintwork, it's great. There are washers in the crevices, and over the top, this bluish-grey dry brushing. It looks aged and worn. Now there is a peg port down below and you do get a translucent plastic stick that you do use to insert in there and then you can activate the LEDs. It's a soft glow, the LEDs are diffused. At certain angles, you can see some shadowing though from the sculpt work inset into these translucent sections. Then for the hovering effect, you get a circular display base with another translucent pole. You literally just insert it into the bottom of the hover lamp and then it looks like it's hovering. Next up, he does come with a hat with the House Atreides sigil on the front. That is metal. And the hat is full fabric. It isn't wearable. We'll discuss why it's not wearable when we get the figure out here. You do get the pain box that his mother's cronies had him insert his hand into so he would see the visions and experience pain. The sculpt work is impeccable, and so too are the paint applications, just like the hover lamp. There's also some subtle green weathering on the surface. It makes this thing look even more aged and beat up. You can insert this hand. It's specifically designed for the paint box on the inside. 
Not sure if you can tell, there is even some sculpt work and paint applications inside the darn thing. I don't know why, something about 1-6 scale printed books just makes me so happy. I'm obsessed with these little things. We've got some printed images of the steel suit, fully annotated. Then on the outside, some leather grain texture with some airbrush shading around the edges. Now it's not a real book, this is fully sculpted. By the way, Org Toys, get on this, we need Paul in his still suit. This next book doesn't look anything like a book, but that's what Org Toys call it. Washes in all the sculpted detail, and there's even some super sharp silver line work around the edges of this main central piece. And lastly, Gloved hands and ungloved hands. These ungloved hands, the gestures looking as realistic as they do with the skin texture, the subtle wrinkling, the complexion with the red paint on the knuckles, they might just be the best 1-6 scale hands that I've ever seen. The gloves look great too. There's this leather grain texture. You also have some stitched line work and they are super matte looking. What we are going to do now though is get Paul himself out here. Standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that, except for one, I do have him holding his hat. I just think it completes the outfit. Org toys, they were a big question mark for me. When I shot that accessory segment, I started to get a little bit more excited, of course, seeing the stuff that he comes with and the quality of those pieces. Nothing compares to the figure himself. This guy, he's pretty sensational. He's not perfect. The one complaint I have is he's a little bit too tall. I think they stretched out his torso just a touch too much. It's nothing crazy and it does not throw off the entire figure. In a pose, the proportions, they still look very realistic. The best word I can use to describe this figure is classy from top to bottom. The thinness of the body, the lankiness of it that lends to those good proportions, the quality of the tailoring, and the head sculpt on top of all of that other stuff, like I said, classy. Up close and personal, kicking things off with Paul's head sculpt. Does it look like Timothy Chalamet? I definitely think so, especially from that angle right there. I reckon that is where the likeness is the strongest. The skin texture is very, very subtle. There's even a little bit of five o'clock shadow. Now, they could not go too heavy on the skin texture and detail. Because the dude is young, he doesn't have frown lines and wrinkles and extra moles and bits and pieces they can add in to sell the likeness. It just had to be a great head sculpt and painted well, which I think it is. The expression is stoic, perfect for Paul. And my favorite detail is this little dangly piece of hair behind his ear, just to add a touch more depth. The hair has flow to it and multiple layers of paint. Plus the hairline, the blend between the hair itself and the head sculpt, has been feathered, so it looks really natural. He even has a little bit of rosy complexion on his Adam's apple and the various areas where you'd expect it to be. The tips of his ears, the tip of his nose, and on his cheeks as well. Now if you're wondering if he can wear his hat, no. In real life, when you pop a hat on your hair, your hair is soft and it conforms to the shape of the hat. Whereas in 1-6 scale, hair is fully sculpted, so popping this hat on is a no-no. It's just to be held by Paul or placed on his display base as some kind of set dressing. Oh, and by the way, we will be popping his jacket on in just a second. Speaking of jackets, he is wearing one. And all of the hardware, the chain with the little dangly pieces, the House of Trades logos up top and these buckles, they're all real metal, meaning they're cold to the touch and it adds to the premium feel. He does have some epaulets and they close with magnets, completely unnecessary, but I love that detail. He's got a faux white collar tucked underneath his green jacket, so it's not adding any bulk to the jacket itself, it's just there for show. And the cut, the stitching is very, very clean all the way around. You do have to be careful with these chains. They do tend to have a mind of their own. What I would suggest doing is dial in the pose first, then adjust them later. Coming down to his pants, they're a little bit baggy and they do tuck into the tops of his boots. So when you bend his knees, they will tend to flare out. 
I actually think that adds to the look. That's how they're supposed to be. They're military style pants. There is a crease iron down the front. They're a nice soft material and the stitching just like the jacket is super clean. He does have some pleather boots on. I would have preferred a split cut boot design seeing as though there's a natural place where the cut could be. I don't want to complain too much though, these do work and they look way more realistic than a split cut boot ever could. Because that's sculpted whereas this is material, so when you're posing his ankles, these move along with the feet underneath or inside the boots. On the underside, no sculpted tread, just completely smooth. Like I said before though, let's try the jacket out. This is a badass looking jacket in my display, he's going to be rocking this all the time. There's now contrast between the green jumpsuit and the white shirt to his black jacket, which was needed. There was a lot of green and all that did for him was accentuate his very long torso and his lanky proportions, which Timothy Chalamet does have. It now bulks him out at the shoulders, tucks into the top of his gloves, and by the way, look how natural the gesture is on these gloves and the texture on the surface. I'd almost go so far as to say these are some in-art level gloves. The jacket does have wires down the bottom so you can cinch it around his legs to try and manage the excess fabric, get it to drape nicely. There are also wires in these tassel -y rope things for some reason. I might actually remove them. These do not do anything for me at all. I kind of wish there were wires in the lapels and the collar. You just have to work with it and maybe steam the jacket to get this thing to play ball. I want it to sit like this and out of the box without steaming it, it doesn't want to. It has a mind of its own. Still, love the jacket. For a quick side-by-side -side comparison, I didn't know who else to go with because I don't own any other Dune figures yet. I could have gone with Aquaman, seeing as though Jason Momoa and that connection, or Thanos, seeing the Josh Brolin connection. I didn't want to go with any of those. I had TVA Loki to hand and that just shows you the difference between the Org Toys tailoring and a Hot Toys tailored suit slash business style outfit. Org Toys, they were a little bit too ham on the height for Timothy Chalamet. In real life, he's 5 foot 10. Versus Tom Hiddleston, he is 6 foot 2. So this scaling, it's not super accurate. If you're a stickler for real world 1-6 scale accuracy, you want the actors to be in scale with other actors from other companies, that is something to be aware of. For me, as long as this Dune line scales with the other figures in said line, I'm going to be perfectly fine with that. Going over articulation without the jacket on. I decided let's just leave it off. I want to give this guy the best chance possible to showcase his maximum range of motion. Starting off with the head sculpt, it's on a fixed neck with a ball joint down the bottom. Looking forward to there, looking up to there, swivel and pivot side to side. The arms will go up to there with some minor bunching at the shoulder pad area, going forward and back on soft ratchets, butterfly joint at the shoulder that hinges up and down. Swivel at the bicep, double bend at the elbow, going past 90. Then for the wrist peg, a hinge and swivel. The torso does crunch forward and back, swivel and pivot side to side. Just know that there are multiple layers here and there's some padding underneath the outfit as well. The legs will go forward to there, going out to there, swivel at the upper thigh, double bend at the knee going past 90. And for the ankles, double ball pegs underneath some soft pleather boots. They will go forward and back, swivel, plus you get some ankle tilt. Wrapping up on Org Toys, Timothy Chalamet, aka Paul of House Atreides from Dune. I really like this figure and I didn't know if I was going to seeing as though I've never owned anything from Org Toys before. They are the new company on the block and they've burst onto the scene with this first release. They have delivered a very, very solid first figure. This is a figure that a lot of companies would dream of being able to make, let alone licensed, which this one is. The likeness to Timothy Chalamet is there. The quality of the head sculpt, paint applications and expression and likeness and all of that stuff on point. The outfit, the tailoring is sharp as hell. I am super, super impressed. If you want a Paul Atreides in this particular outfit from the first Dune film, 
What are you waiting for? This guy is going to fit the bill and it's officially licensed. I don't think I've mentioned that already. Maybe only a few times. I do want to remind you that this is a review sample. All of my opinions though are my own. They did not tell me to say anything and I couldn't care less if you get this or not. I'm just really happy that I got it and I can pop this in my collection and slowly but surely build out my Dune display. A massive thank you goes out to Org Toys for making this review possible. If you are heading down to the description, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon and join button if you like the sound of seeing your name in the end credits of my reviews. Like, comment and subscribe. We'll catch you in the next video.